Several. <laughs> Let's say several. Who was the mother of the one at that time? At that time, it was Willie and Cece, um, because, um, uh, what's his name? Um, Ross wasn't in the scene at that time. He was away for a while. So it was Willie and Cece, the mother at that time. Okay. And, and, and mm -hmm. how, how, how did you, what was the next house after that? How did you end up leaving the House of Infinity? Um, I left the House of Infinity in 1995 after the second annual Infinity Ball. Um, I think a couple of members from the house, like, you know, me, Janet, um, a lot of the main, the head, the head runners of the house kind of left. Right, right. And, um, just for personal reasons, it was, a, it was nothing, no shade, you know, I had a great time being in Infinity. I, I learned a lot and, um, they were very good to me. Um, and then after I left Infinity, I became a Revlon. Wow. I remember. That's when I met you at Clubhouse. I, I, I left the Clubhouse. You were a Revlon. And you were voguing New yes. Way in, in the middle of the of the dance floor. And I was cringing at your style technique. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I used to look at your face and you were so confident. You would look at me and you'd be like, bitch, I'm over. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, 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 I have to be honest. I wasn't, I wasn't always so confident, but um, I think that um, I mean, shout out to the House of Revlon, you know, regardless of whatever. <laughs> um, I, I learned a lot. Confidence in me. I was like, I want to be, I want to have confidence like Pablo. <laughs> well, you know, like I said, you know, shout out to the House of Revlon. Um, yeah the time me being a Revlon I you know I learned a lot and I think that's where I really um made an impact I think how myself did, how did you become a Revlon how did you get into mm. as a Revlon um it's a funny story because um you know I wasn't I was involved with the New York City underground club scene and stuff like that at the time and um I was in no house for a while and uh Kurt Revlon one day approached me and asked me if I wanted to do a, a performance with Jose Revlon and uh, Damien Revlon. And since I looked up to them so much, I was like, yeah, I'll do it. You know, I was cool with it. I didn't have any beef for anyone, you know. So I was like, okay, that's fine. So then um, me, Jose Revlon and Damien uh, started rehearsing together and stuff like that. And I think the chemistry between us was great at that time. And um, yeah, and then it just kind of just went like that and I just became a Revlon. Amazing, amazing. Now, how, how Which I was, I was very, I was very honored for, for that, for them asking me because I looked up to them so much, you know. Revlon was pumping. They were hot. Hey, listen, nobody, let me tell you something. Nobody was winning Vogue the House when it was me, Jose, and Damien. <laughs> I know that's right. Congratulations. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah. I used to come to those shows and I used to watch it. Now, now, how yeah. many, how many balls have you walked in trophies? Have you won under, under the name of Revlon? Ooh, under the Revlon, I've won a lot. I would say I, I've won Vogue Femme, Vogue as a House, New Way, Hand Performance, Arms Control. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> yes. You know, I used to be mesmerized. Well, I stay on, you know, I wear hand control and arm control and stretch it over. Well. Like I, when you started doing hand performance and arm control, I was living for that category. You really inspired me. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay, and now from Revlon, how did you, you know, from what was the transition from <clears throat> Revlon to Milan? Um, you know, you know, while I was a Revlon, you know, I just think that, you know, maybe the week. I, you know, I really still don't know what happened with that, to be honest. But um, I wasn't a Revlon anymore, and um, you know, for whatever reasons. Um, one day I was in a Sound Factory, the original Sound Factory, and um, Eric Archibald, the original one of the original fathers of the House of Milan, after Roger, may he rest in peace. Um, he just made me a Milan, and I just been in that house ever since, and it's been such a perfect fit. You know, it's. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> oh, all right. I know that's right. Yeah, exactly. 
Now, real quick before we go into the Home Alone thing, you know, because everybody, especially the new girls and everybody who watches YouTube, <laughs> they want to know what was the shade between Jose Stephanie Revlon and you? What happened there? Um, you know, I really think that it was all like a misunderstanding. I know on the video it looked one way, but it really wasn't. It was like, um, you know, I have nothing but respect for Jose Revlon. You know, I've learned to accept what happened and move on because I'm not going to hold grudges or live in that um, in the past or whatever. Right, right, right. But, um, yeah, you know, there was an incident a week before that ball with uh, Roger Revlon, may he rest in peace, you know, and wow. Roger and I have, um, I'm happy that he, uh, him and I were resolved our issues before he passed away, you know. Wow. So shout out to him, in the heavens. And um, so, you know, on the, on, on the video, it looks like I was throwing shade at Jose Revlon, but I really wasn't because, you know, he was one of my mentors and through him, I, I learned a lot, and I was able to grow as a as a vulgar, you know. Right. Um, so I just thought it was a misunderstanding. I guess they must have thought that I was talking to him, but I wasn't. I mean, how could I have respect for him at that time, you know? So, yeah, I think that's what it was, you know. But you know, I've forgiven him, and you know, I've moved on, and it's no yeah. shade, and it that's it, you know. How do you feel about yeah, you know, no shade in the ballroom, you know? Fights, you know, now the new era. Well, you know, as you know, for when I became a Milan, you know, I kind of um, matured as a person. Right, right. Oh, yeah. And definitely. um, I've learned. Yeah, I definitely matured. You know, when I was younger, I can say I was good. You know, shady or arrogant or you know. So I apologize to anyone if I was, if I was ever shady to you. It wasn't my intention. <laughs> I guess it was just. You know the surroundings I was in and the people I was with. I know that's right. But um, yeah, it's it over though. Yeah. <laughs> I used to live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't, I'm not too big on the shade thing. I just, you know, I think everybody should just have fun, and you know, this is supposed to be a community where we try to escape the world as a, you know, normal problems, and this is our place right. to this is a place escape to put from on that. your alter ego, and, you know, and perform and be who you want to be, and be free to express yourself. Yeah, you know, that was what the ballroom yeah. was was about. Yeah, exactly. 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 So, yeah, that's how I feel. I don't think it's really necessary, but you know, everybody's different. You know, so. Okay, now, there's a little rumor going around saying that when you went to Russia, they didn't accept your passport. Now, to break the ice and to set things <laughs> clear, <laughs> here. That's a good one. Is that, is that true or is that true or false? That is very, very false. I've no, been to Russia true. like three times. I, I was one of the first people to ever go to Russia to do the first ball ever. No, that's not true at all. Word. Now... Since we're talking about Russia and the you know, speed and the and stuff like that, um, before, before we go into that, though, I wanted to say, tell us about your position in the House of Milan. Well, in Europe, I'm the overall father of the house. So I have a chapter here. Congratulations. And the House of Milan. Oh, thank you. I do it in the name of Roger and Terry. May the rest in peace. Um, I, um... I created the House of uh, Milan in Finland. That's where it was born. Wow. Yeah, and then from there I have members in Finland, I have members in Sweden, I have members in Romania, I have members in Croatia, I have members in UK. So, you know, I have a pretty good amount of, of children. And, you know, Stanley, Stanley has also played a part of um, building the house here as well with me. So, right. congratulations! Yeah. So shout, so shout out to Dan and Milan. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, very few legends and icons have traveled overseas. Tell us about the origins of the European ballroom scene and your decision <clears throat> to take it to Sweden and, and and open up all these chapters. Well, um, I think the whole Vogue overseas started when um. It actually started in Russia, in St. Petersburg, and the House of De La Gracia in Russia, they were the first ones to ever do the first ball in Europe and in Russia. And uh, I was uh, honored to be 
there with Deshaun Wesley and iconic Derek Extravaganza. And us three were the ones who actually participated in the first ball there ever. Wow. Amazing. Yeah, so, yeah, so there's a little history there. And then, you know, they started, you know, every time I teach or I go overseas, I always let the students know who to look for, you know, who should they learn from, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah. Word. Now, tell us a little bit about how, how was it for you? Was it different with the new, like, tell us about this experience when you first got overseas. Um, well, the first time I went overseas was back in uh, 1999, and um, it was me, Jose Revlon, uh, Monet Ebony, um, Conti Carlos, and we went to um, Frankfurt, Germany, and we just put on a showcase. That was the first time. But as My far as um, teaching, Carlos. yes, <laughs> yes, Conti Carlos. <laughs> so shout out to him. Yes. Um, yeah. So the, I mean, as far as teaching overseas, the first time for me was uh, Russia when we did the, the first ball, the, the North Venice ball, the East ball. Now, when you first got overseas, now how how were the vulgars? How did did they, they vogue down already? Like, cause cause I hear I mean, you know, some that of them some, they, they um, take vogue differently than than the way we do. To them, it's actual a dance and an art form. Like straight people do it. It's not a gay thing for them. Right. Like right, explain exactly. that to I, us. Like it's for everybody. It, yeah. I mean, it's for everybody. I think the most in Europe. I think the most you have vulgars are women. They're mostly females. Um, you do have your males as well, but I think, um, yeah, it's a different experience. It's, um, yeah, it's different. Yeah, in a good way. Okay. And, um, like, from the first time I went to teach, like, you know, some of the students there, like, to now, I mean, those kids have just dedicated themselves, and they've just shown such a, an improvement and such a force and a love for it that it's just, like, crazy, you know? Wow. Now, would you and say... And so would you say they, huh? they take it more seriously than the, the United States? I would say about the same, I think. Okay. Ooh. Try not to give up the scandals. Would... <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Don't hold it back. <laughs> Don't worry, we got more episodes coming. But yeah, check it out. Also, uh... How who who are some of your inspirations and some some of your favorite people in in in, in Europe right now who are, who are also you know helping out with the Vogue and the ballrooms community in in, in Europe? Um, as far as Europe, mm hmm. Mm -hmm. hmm. Um, well, I would have to say um, I would have to say a big shout out to the Paris ballroom scene. Because uh, the Paris ballroom scene is just, it's growing so rapidly and, you know, Lysandra Ninja was the first one to start the ballroom culture there. And, um, yeah, I think those kids are bringing it. Yeah. I hear, I hear in France the ballroom scene is a lot of carrying, arguing and stuff like that. It's key. I would say it's the closest to the States out of all the European countries. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's how I would find That's bad. That's bad. <laughs> Where do you see the future of the legendary, iconic House of Milan? Hmm. Well, I will say this. I say there's a lot of um, a lot of good things coming. You know, not only in ballroom, but just in in the music industry, in the video industry, in the fashion industry. So we're trying to touch on other things besides just the ballroom scene. Okay. Wow. Overall, bringing in mainstream, yeah. huh? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, who were some of your greatest influences in the ballroom scene in general? In general, okay. Well, I have to say this. <laughs> first and foremost, the first person that inspired me to vote New Way was Damien Revlon. I just, I just love his performance. For me, it's just like wow every time, you know. And then Willie Ninja, of course, because through Willie, I was able to um, uh, network into a lot of 
gigs and stuff like that. So happy birthday and rest in peace to Willie Ninja, you know? Yeah. Happy birthday, Willie Ninja. Yeah.